Hey everybody, so before the uh, Fedora 18 review, I wanted to uh, rant a little bit about uh, Ubuntu 13.04. So um, if you want to avoid the rant and go straight into the review, just go ahead and click here. I'll have a little box somewhere on the screen for you to ignore me. Okay, so the rest of you guys are still here, so um, chances are you want to listen to this rant, right? Okay, I'm going to be talking about my complaints with Ubuntu 13.04. I've got this great System76 laptop that I've had since June of last year. Works beautifully, right? 12.04, which is a long-term support release. A good distribution, right? But, you know, I'm not going to be wanting to run Ubuntu 12.04 a year and a half after it's been released. I'm kind of more cutting edge than that. But So, you know, I installed uh, 13.04, which has a uh, um, the latest version of Ubuntu as of this video, and uh, I started noticing little glitches I didn't have with 12.10 or even 12.04. Um, every five or six boots, I would end up with a black screen and a little cursor, so something with the bootloader wasn't working. Um, I'd have unexpected crash notifications pop up every once in a while, not terribly often, and it was probably just some thing running in the background, but uh, it was frustrating enough uh, to have that um, always on my panel that I'd have to dismiss when I'm working in Ubuntu Studio. Now I imagine that's uh, just because I need to update my kernel. I don't have that problem on my desktop machine, which is a Sandy Bridge uh, CPU that I built myself, uh, or machine that I built myself. That's about two years old. Don't have those problems there, but I've been having it with my, my laptop, and uh, my laptop is more my primary machine. Take it to work, use it at home. I need it to be stable, but I also want it to be cutting edge. So, these problems lead me to deciding what to do. I don't want to stick to Ubuntu anymore, at least not until the next release comes out. And uh, that's another complaint I'm going to rant about right here. They only support these releases for nine months. And there's literally hundreds of Ubuntu-based distributions out there. You know, great distributions, great projects, like uh, Triskel is a perfect example. They're purely open source Libre. But you know, they're forced into making a decision on whether or not they should go and keep supporting their distribution on a six-month cycle just so that Canonical can say, oh, we're only going to support it for nine months. So basically, uh, you're going to have to upgrade your distribution every six months so that you still get supported by the, uh, the Canonical upstream rather than the 12 months they were doing before. So a lot of distributions have decided one of two things. They just stick to 1204, which gets a little bit hairy when, you know, you're uh, a year and a half out, 18 months, and you're like, oh, this distribution feels really old. I'm running two versions old of XFCE or, 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 or GNOME simply because it's based on 1204. There are ways around that. Um, repositories take care of that. But quite honestly, I, I think it really sucks. Now, if you like long-term support, then their new five-year plan with, with uh, their long-term support release is great. But I've found that the long-term supports, although they are solid, they're a little bit boring and lacking of innovation, which is part of the reason why we all use Linux, right? At least some of us. So um, if I wasn't having these weird crashes and the random not wanting to boot every five or six times, I would definitely uh, still be using Ubuntu as my main distribution but I found it to be uh, way too frustrating. Even going into Ubuntu Studio and uh, Zubuntu, I would still find these crashes and problems. So I've decided to move over to Fedora. There were some other uh, distributions I looked at. I was looking at Sabian, which is way cutting edge, but um, I'm not quite uh, there yet with my knowledge of Linux and Gentoo. Now, Sabian, you don't have to compile everything from, you know, they have this great... Uh, package management system called Rego, which uh, basically they prepackage everything, you install it. It's a Gen 2 based system, but just like Ubuntu or Fedora, everything's prepackaged for you. So I thought, well, if I'm going to use a Gen 2 based system, I'm probably better off just using Gen 2. Well, I'm not quite ready to do that on my desktop or my laptop yet. My desktop's another story. I have less things to worry about. I have it, you know, Etherneted into my internet. It's not using Wi Fi. So just a few extra or less things to worry about. Anyway, so um, there's a few rants there. I'm, I'm a little frustrated with Ubuntu. 
can't stand how unstable their distribution has become over the last uh, year and a half. And um, and it's it, it, it is frustrating. I I love the project. I I love the work they're doing, but they're kind of phoning it in with these six month release cycles. You know, thirteen oh four looked nice, but didn't function very well. And uh, you know, twelve oh twelve ten still had a few issues with their whole like you know sending stuff over to the web to do really crappy searches in the lens when you're say looking for um your uh music all right let's say you're looking for oh god i don't know i just know one time i was looking for a book on php or something and i got a result that had nothing to do with uh php nothing at all so those ubuntu uh uh, Amazon search results completely pointless, completely useless. And of course, I can just install another Ubuntu-based distribution and avoid that altogether. But eh, whatever. So um, now that I'm done with the rant and frustrated, I wanted to show you guys uh, Fedora 18 and uh, how much it's improved since the previous versions, like 16 and 7. Now I'm using the XFCE spin, so you're not going to be seeing any GNOME project stuff here. So um, definitely uh, um, stick around for that. All right, so let me resize this window so you don't have to look at my ugly mug the entire time. Okay, so let's get on with the uh, Fedora 18 XFCE review. Now, their uh, default desktop was very uh, underwhelming. It's the same generic uh, XFCE desktop you get from any installation. Uh, like, let's say you install Arch Linux, you install XFCE, looks just like that no customization you have the ugly uh, gnome icons and um and the xfce wallpaper i think that maybe this wallpaper might have been here, here by default but i've changed it a few times since then so i'm not entirely certain on that so let's look at see what we get with uh fedora 18 shall we we get funar 1.6.3 which now supports and um maybe it has for a while tabbed uh tab file management Sometimes they get PC file manager mixed up with Funar. Uh, there is no mail reader pre-installed, so it would ask me to install one, but generally I use uh, Gmail, so everything's web-based. Um, you get your web browser, which is uh, fi uh, Firefox. You get uh, some accessories like uh, a simple calculator or Orange Global Time screenshot, you know, basic XFCE applications. I added GIMP so I could do some image editing. And uh, for multimedia, you get Pragha uh, Music Player, which I have open right here. Great, lightweight music player, runs beautifully, uh, hasn't had any problems with it. Plus, you can right, you can left click in here and um, not left click, but right click over in here and uh, um, do a little bit of uh, media management that way. So. That's pretty much the uh, the basic smattering of applications. You get Abby Word, not LibreOffice, so that keeps the ISO a lot smaller, the uh, installation a lot uh, quicker. So, of course, with uh, Fedora 18, you get the desktop edition that's normally with um, with um, GNOME, and uh, and um, you know, but there are more download options. So you go in and you grab GNOME, KDE, LXDE, XFCE, but there's also spins. And these are going to be uh, curated versions of Ubuntu, of Fedora, that have uh, uh, LXDE. I mean, well, these are non curated, but like the Electronic Lab will have uh, stuff for electronics based uh, research kind of cool not really a uh, electron electrical engineer but I am a graphic designer so maybe the design suite something I would like to use well yes but um, you know I prefer XFCE and I also kind of prefer just adding the design applications I want as I need them scientific robotics uh, a great way to expand on the default ISOs of uh, Fedora let's say you work in um, I guess uh, some sort of enterprise label group of whatever. Then you can get these ISOs that have most of the tools you need and uh, install that on five or six, seven, eight different machines. And you've got some of the basic stuff that you won't have to add manually. Now, 
uh, Fedora by default is only uh, allows for free and open source uh, packages. So you won't see MP3 uh, support. You uh, will have trouble with certain Wi-Fi support. Uh, your NVIDIA graphics card will not work. But you can go in and add RPM Fusion, which will allow you to install stuff like Adobe Flash. So you could use uh, YouTube, for instance, and uh, watch this video. If I don't label this as Creative Commons, it'll end up asking you for Flash just to watch it, which is another rant altogether. But I'll save that for a future video. So um, what I've what's really amazing about uh, Fedora is it does not make any assumptions as to what kind of system you want to use, right? They give you the bare bones spin for each version, so the LXDE spin will be very lightweight for older computers, work wonderfully. XFCE will do a little bit of the same. KDE and GNOME will select packages that work well with KDE and GNOME. So, for instance, with the GNOME version or the XFCE version, you won't have pre installed. QT software like VLC. So um, as you saw that it didn't update check, I don't have any updates uh, that I need to worry about. It does take, uh, Yum Extender does take a while to search for um, um, available packages. I find this a little strange since I've done this a few times today, um, but it does take a little bit of time. Of course you can go in and do this stuff over the command line. It's a lot faster. But um, but if you are more of a WYSIWYG type update person, Fedora can handle that for you. So let's take a look for LibreOffice, for instance. So you go in here and you could easily install LibreOffice, the whole damn thing, and, and just take care of it that way. Now it looks like because I exited to uh, in the middle of something, it's giving me an error. First error I've seen literally in two weeks. Uh, Fedora has been extremely stable. So um, if you're looking for a stable non-Ubuntu based distribution and uh, you've been using Linux for a little while but you're not yet up to uh, the Linux mastery of say Arch Linux or Gentoo, give Fedora a shot. The Anaconda installer is just as easy to use as Ubuntu Studio. It's got a few visual design quirks that are weird like having confirmation buttons at the top instead of in the bottom right which is standard but um, outside of that it boots up almost as quickly as Ubuntu um, I haven't qu really configured my system to the point to uh, have it ignore the grub screen I'm sure it would be just as fast as Ubuntu if I did that but uh, it's a very solid distribution and I can't wait to try the XFCE spin of uh, Fedora 19 when that comes available so anyway everyone thanks for watching my um, quick review of Fedora 18 and uh, this XFCE spin my rant on spins and how awesome the Fedora project is become over the last couple years um, I'm amazed it's been a couple years since I've used Fedora and I was running into all these issues maybe it was the computer I was using at the time but but this is pretty solid and uh, maybe that's simply because I'm using a system 76 machine which is you know 98% non proprietary uh, hardware so anyway uh, have a great afternoon and uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to me rant about everything take it easy and I'll see you guys in the next video